many Python sequence manipulation built-in functions take and return iterable objects. I'm talking about map and filter and sum and reduce and all and any. Let's take a look at an example of how convenient these sequence operations can be. So map, filter, and reduce can express sequence manipulation using very compact expressions. Let's say we want to sum all the prime numbers in an interval from A to B. Now let's pretend that we already defined a function that tells us whether some number is prime. Early in the course, we might have implemented some primes in this way. Define a total, bind some number x, which is going to iterate through all the integers from A up until B, check if x is prime, and if so, add it to the total, which will eventually return. The space that's required in order to execute this function, given an interval from A to B of size n, is just theta1. We only need to keep track of total and x and a and b in order to compute this function, no matter how large the interval is. Now here is a much more compact definition of the same procedure. I'd like to sum the result of filtering the range from a to b using the isPrime function. Now let's say we want to sum primes from 1 to 6. What actually happens? Well, the range is implicit. The range iterator that's extracted by filter actually only keeps track of what's next. It never explicitly represents all the numbers in the range. So it actually uses only constant space. The filter object that's created by calling filter remembers that is prime is the filtering function and remembers the source or iterator input that's going to yield values. And then sum takes a source as well and keeps track of a total. Filter requests the next element from range, which is one which is not prime. Then it requests the next element again. That one is prime, and so it's added to the total within the sum. And three is also prime, so that's added to the total within the sum. Then filter requests the next element. It's not prime, so it's not used. The next element is prime, and so it is used, and we finish computation. Now nowhere did we use linear space in this description, and so even though we're expressing our computation in terms of sequences, we've managed to keep our implementation down to constant space. But that's only true because of the lazy, implicit nature of range and filter. If either range had explicitly written out all the elements from A to B, or filter had explicitly written out all of the remaining elements after filtering away the ones that weren't prime, we would have ended up using linear space but iterators are a convenient way to avoid that outcome. So you can safely implement your programs like this instead of writing out a while statement and an explicit summation. The isPrime function can also be considered a sequence operation. We can just check all the numbers less than x. So if x is less than or equal to 1, then it's definitely not prime. But otherwise, we just want to figure out whether it's the case that all of the elements that I receive when I map a function that divides x by y are true values for everything in the range from 2 to x. For some primes, I keep the implementation that I showed you on the slide, which just returns the result of summing the result of filtering using is prime a range from a to b. If I load this into Python, and then I ask to sum the primes from 1 to 6, it will give me 2, 3, and 5 is 10. Or from 1 to 10, we also pick up the number 17. And if I go all the way up to 100, then I end up with 1060. All of this was computed in constant space. It doesn't matter how large this interval is, I'm not going to run out of memory. Now I wonder if we can do the same thing in Scheme. Well, we can certainly take the same sequence processing approach using the tools we already have and the built-in list data structure. So here are the sequence operations we've talked about before. Map applies some function to every element in S. Filter keeps only the elements in S for which F is true. And reduce combines the elements in S 
using a true argument function f starting with the start value. Now if we want things like range and sum, we have to define them ourselves. A range is a list that's either nil if a is greater than or equal to b, or starts with a and is followed by a range from a plus 1 to b. And what about sum? Well, if you want to sum up all the elements in a sequence s, you just reduce using addition all of the elements in s starting at 0. Now we can define whether something is prime in a very similar way to what we did before. We can check and see if it's the case that x is less than or equal to 1, in which case it's not prime. Otherwise, we'll filter using a predicate that checks whether x is divisible by some y for every y from 2 up to and not including x. And if that's empty, then it's prime. So we filter using a lambda function that checks to see if the remainder of dividing x by y is 0. If that's true, then we haven't proven yet that x is not a prime number. And we have to do this for the range starting at 2 up until x. Finally, summing primes is straightforward. The sum of the primes from a to b is just the sum of filtering using prime the range from a to b, which, given the infrastructure that we've just built, is almost exactly the same definition as we saw in Python. So if I load my scheme program and then figure out what happens when I sum primes from 1 to 6, I get 10, or from 1 to 10, I get 17, or from 1 to 100, I get 1060. Now it took a little while, and that's partly because we're interpreting scheme using Python and not in a particularly efficient way. But more importantly, we are using linear space in order to compute this because range AB actually writes out all the numbers from 1 to 100 explicitly. When we filter that using prime, we get a shorter list, but it's still a list that's written out explicitly, as opposed to just considering one element at a time in order to build up the sum. So we've lost some efficiency when we switched from Python's iterator-based approach to sums and ranges and filtering to the explicit list representations that we see here in Scheme. Fortunately, we can get that efficiency back.